Now, we, we touched on this before. You know, people can love them or hate them, but I have to say that you guys' parodies and videos are extremely creative. <laughs> and the one that I have to admit I laughed very hard was the one about Christmas where you had a sign that called Santa Claus <laughs> Satan Claus. Now, I grew yeah. up with Satan Claus. That's what I was taught. And when I would tell people about this, they look at me and they're just like, what? You know, they had never heard of it before. So I didn't know anybody else did this until I watched your video. And yeah. so I, I want to, do you guys celebrate Christmas? No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of people who do, you know, and you hear this stuff on, you know, Fox News and everything about yes. you know, people who don't celebrate Christmas, there's this war on Christmas and blah, blah, blah. But if you actually, you know, read through the Bible, I think it's in Jeremiah, it condemns Christmas. Yes. Trees. Yes. Um, uh -huh. And it's a very, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's based on. It a, looks a, like religion. it's describing a Christmas tree. It looks like it is. That the language says you go into the forest and you cut down a tree and you fix it to the, to the ground and you, you hang tinsel and stuff on it. And you're, I, when, you know, the first time yeah. I read that, I thought, holy cow, look at this. It looks like they're talking about the Christmas tree. But of course it is because these are all pagan rituals that just get regurgitated and attached to something new. And now it's just what doomed America uses as their, uh, their favorite idol season. You get over in the season of idols, and man, I, I want to go hide in my house. These people get, these so-called Christians are more vicious and angry during that season than any other. And there's well, you no, know there's what no the scripture. number one thing that is stolen during the pre-Christmas season is? <laughs> Probably. I'll give, uh, I'll no, give you a guess. Knows? No, just guess. What is the number one thing that is stolen before Christmas? Uh, Probably... Um, they're, baby they're Jesus. Not, they're baby Jesus, yes. The Bible. Is that really it? Uh, the Bible? Is that you The Bible. Me? That is the number one thing. Oh, really? The Bible, yes. And why? What do they do with it? Well, I don't know. I, I just thought it was quite ironic because if you actually read the Bible, it, it doesn't talk about Christmas. It pretty much condemns it. <laughs> it does. That's exactly right. It pretty much condemns it. It says, it says three times at Deuteronomy 4, at uh, Proverbs 30 and at uh, the last chapter of the last book of the Bible, that if you add anything to these things that are written in this book or take away from, if you add to, I'm going to add to you the plagues and the curses that are written in this book. And if you take away from the things that are written in this book, I'm going to take away your name from the book of life. In, De in Deuteronomy 4, it says, do not add aught and do not diminish by aught. And so, so that's uh, funny because I was, I, you're reading my mind because I had this in my notes, that very uh, scripture. And, yeah. you know, now in the Old Testament, there's these things like the Feast of Tabernacles, the Unleavened uh -huh. Bread, Feast of Trumpets, right. um, all those right. kinds of things. I mean, do you guys yes. practice that? Okay. You've got the ceremonial law and you've got the moral law and it Acts 10 and in the book of Galatians and in many other places in the New Testament where this thing, where Christ came and fulfilled the law, and while the lessons are good and solid, it's, it's specifically says, like where it talks about the ordinances that, were, uh, that are nailed to the cross, mm -hmm. when Christ fulfilled the law, the ceremonial part of the law was abolished. It was fulfilled. It was completed. But, when, but the um, moral law was re, um, re uh, iterated and codified, recodified, and you find it again and again. Those two concepts throughout the New Testament. So we're not well, any probably, longer uh, under the. You ceremony explain that law. more succinctly than I think anybody um, I've heard try to explain away the you know explain that. Um, yeah, but the Ten well, Commandments, uh, though, are moral law, right? Exactly. The, and the, all right, and the first so half I was going to ask you yeah. one of the biggest stories. Um, uh, one of our writers at God Discussion, named Dakota O'Leary, actually had found this story um, minutes after it happened. The great, big, huge touchdown Jesus. It's like, what, like six, yes. six stories tall. Yes, um, yes. This great, big, huge uh, thing looming out by the, what is it, the Church of the Rock or whatever, and it gets cracked right. by lightning and burns up right. in four hours. Right. So, or four minutes, I should say. So, is yes. that, now, the, that, I mean, that the was another God smack I wrote. Pardon me? 
That was another God smack. See, you can follow us on Twitter at God smacks you. It's all one word. God, oh, God smacks, smacks you the letter U. Yeah, U. You know the letter U. God smacks you. And so right. every day, all the, there's so many of these events that we do them. But, yes, I was so happy when that happened because it's another – he says he's going to – one of the first places he goes after. And when he took the children of Israel out and killed all those uh, uh, firstborn, he cast down all their idols. He, all these false gods and their idols are the first things that's going down right behind the lying false preachers. He says, to get to the tabernacle. When you look at the, the guy with the ink horn and the six destroying men with their slaughter weapons that answers to Revelation 7 or, yeah, or when there's a space of silence and so forth. But anyway, I'm just saying, surely, that's one of the first surely this he's going. I just have to jump in here and ask because this just begs the question. Um, I mean, and, and we understand it, you know, I mean, the, the verses from the Bible about, you know, the, you, you won't um, idolize any false, you, you won't, um, right. you know, idolize any right. false images. Um, yes. But then how about all these, like, mega churches where you see these yes. these congregations and the, and the steeplejacking that's going on now, which exactly. is, you know, for those that don't know, and I know you know what I'm saying, but for those who are listening that don't know, steeplejacking is becoming more and more of a of a real aggressive um, behavior. I live on a very small island. We have less than a thousand people, and there is actually a new chapel they call it out here, and it is a steeplejacking um, couple who moved out here, set up right across from the tiny three-room schoolhouse, and we have a native reservation just um, nearby, and the harvesting of souls of First Nation peoples, and then they always go to the children, and yeah. and the thing thing is is that it they're a, they're a they are actually like missionaries of these huge enormous mega churches that have these big screen TVs and the yeah. the preachers or pastors or ministers whatever they call them have the you know the microphones on their ear and they pace back and forth and they wear their $250 jeans that are faded in the front and then they're <laughs> with and, holes <laughs> And, and I mean, is this not all part of it? I mean, beyond just yes. the, the physical of what we can see, the six-story, you know, touchdown Jesus, yes. um, you know, the all John Hagees, you know what I mean? It's just this. Exactly. But it, it, it just sucks people in. And D. James Kennedy's um, um, evangelism explosion um, program where he teaches people to go out and research um, obituaries and whose homes are going into foreclosure, who just lost a loved one, go to their your local county office and look uh, up whose there, houses. They're a bunch of predatory, greedy beasts. That's what we, it's still, that's just another curse from God. And I, I just love this. And you've got to get over there where it says, but don't let any of these things, it's, it's basically, don't get, don't, don't let, them. Paul said, none of these things move me. Neither count on my life, dear unto myself, that I might run this race with patience. We, we have got, look, Christ said right there at the end near uh, in uh, those chapters that I was talking about, he says, pray that ye be found worthy. And, of course, you need to add right there in the prayer to be made and found worthy 